Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. And if you're just trickling in, thank you for arriving. Um, the first 15 minutes of this event is really slotted for you guys to take a moment to read the books. They're all on music stands, so you guys can flip through at a safe social distance. Um, but for the first 15 minutes, I think part of the power of the project is in what the students have written and the wonderful artwork they have done. So p please feel free to uh, use the time to browse, to take a seat, to relax, to enjoy the beautiful space. Um, if no one else is reading the book, take a moment to take a book to your seat um, and enjoy some really wonderful children's literature. And uh, I will be back with you to start the official handoff in about 15 minutes so we can all enjoy the books. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome. 
My students, I am so very glad you were able to join us after the semester has even ended to deliver your projects personally to the tutors who will be able to work with them. I am so proud of you for the amount of time and effort you have spent. Welcome as well to the members of our TAMU community who have joined us today. The projects we are handing over are books written by my students in the Multicultural Children's Literature class. My children's literature class is a service learning course. And what service learning does is it teaches students course content by working with a community partner. Instead of book learning or memorizing information for exams, service learning challenges students to utilize the knowledge of the classroom to better the community in which we live. It asks students difficultly to open their eyes to the world around them and see their education as a tool for inspiring future change. I first want to extend my gratitude to our community partner, the TAMU LBV partnership for sharing its expertise with me and my students and putting our knowledge to use in valuable ways. Thank you particularly to Andrea and Song who have been incredible partners and have had unfailing enthusiasm for everything my students and I could come up with. The TAMU LBV Literacy Partnerships provides tutoring to students who are struggling in reading. And I don't doubt that Andrea will speak to you more about the importance of early literacy intervention and the importance of their program. And how it is one of the only proven ways to close lifelong achievement gaps between students. The challenges that face early literacy acquisition in Laredo, however, are many. And these books hope to address some of these challenges. Numerous studies have demonstrated that when children's books have, and I quote, themes that incorporate their sociocultural experiences, leads to better processing and retention of information, in addition to better reading comprehension. In 2011, however, studies found that just over 3% of books published annually feature Latina, Latino characters, despite the fact that children of Hispanic backgrounds make up over 25% of current public school populations. When it comes to bilingual books, the number of books published annually is significantly less, uh, despite the fact that 22% of students across the United States speak more than one language at home. In Laredo, it goes without saying, students are raised in an incredibly unique culture. And the numbers of books that represent their own experience as border students, as bilingual speakers, as students from Hispanic families, there's not a number on this chart. I would guess less than 1% based on my research. Each of these books then represents an effort to reflect the reading level and sociocultural experiences of the students that the LBV partnership works with. Research further demonstrates that when children can see themselves represented in the books that they read, they can make more text to self, text to text, and text to world connections, thus increasing the likelihood that they will see reading as pleasurable, be motivated to read, and develop a lifelong love of reading. This is always a challenging experience to learn differently. Um, and it's particularly been a challenging experience this semester with online education. It's made the experience slightly more isolating for my students in their final reflection essay speak to some of that. Students, I'm not sure that you know this, but there have been an incredible number of people who believe in you, believe in your project, and have been supporting you behind the scenes even if they haven't gotten the chance to work with you directly. Here today with us, we have the trustees of the uh, LBV Trust who have supported the TAMU LBV Literacy Project so that we continue to make a difference. Joe Martin is here today, accompanied by his grandson, Charlie Martin, Mr. Jim Pearl, accompanied by his wife, Kay Pearl, and also Diana Orfila. Thank you guys for being here. And thank you for your continued support of this literacy partnership. We love working with them, and they have been really supportive of our project. Thank you so much to the College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Jonathan Murphy and Dr. Claudia San Miguel for supporting experiential learning during this unique semester. I think when I came to them with the idea, I said, I promise I can make it work online, and they really threw their weight behind me and let, it, let my students lead the way. I appreciate you taking that leadership role, students. I also wanna thank the students for their giving spirit. Part of the reason we have this donation today and part of the reason we work with the publishing house we work with is that each student receives a free copy. It is a student's choice then to donate their hard work to the Literacy Partnership, and each of my 45 students this year has chosen to donate their book. So it's because of their giving spirit that we're able to continue literacy education. 
Now I'd like to invite Andrea up. She'll speak to you a little bit more about the TAMU LBV Literacy Partnership and what it does and how the books will be used. Thank you very much for joining us today. Can we please just give another round of applause for our LBV trustees, uh, Mr. Martin and Mr. and Mrs. Pearl for being here today and all of their support. Thank you all so much. Y'all are wonderful. Um, I just can't say no to literacy and especially early literacy. So when they reached out, um, Caitlin with the opportunity to expand our service learning and to work with another group of students here at TAMU, I was all for it. I am just so excited to be able to see these products and even more so to get them out into our centers in the fall um, for the children to be able to see these books and to more importantly see themselves. Like Caitlin mentioned, the number of especially children's book children's book, the multicultural, you know, the bilingual, that the children can relate um, what they go through to what they see in the book. There aren't many opportunities for them. So this is going to be just absolutely awesome. We plan to take these books. We're going to create um, lesson plans that match our tutoring model. So then that way the students have that successful opportunity to read these books, that it's going to be paired just right so that not only do they see themselves in it, but they also feel that sense of accomplishment because they are going to be great readers um, in these books. So these books, again, are going out to our centers um, out in Laredo where our tutors will continue tutoring the one-to-one, -one, building that literacy, building that motivation, and their overall um, just love for reading. So thank you all very, very much for being here with us today. Thank you, Andrew. Um, of course, service learning is about engagement with the community, but ideally it's about the students learning to connect with the course material, right? Um, as a teacher, this is very important to me that they're learning, uh, it's a literature class at the end of the day, so they're learning how to read and analyze literature. This means that I leave it up to the students, I can see my students cringing already, I leave it up to the students to tell me how they are engaging with the material they read and how they apply the course materials to the community. For our midterm assignment, students present the project of the class and describe the course materials they found most helpful and how they are using the things they learn to influence the future of Laredo. It's a big and intimidating project. Um, I've asked Brianna here today to help us out and to share her project with us so we can see an example of how this might work and how the things they're learning actually work in these books. I think it's the temptation to say, oh, these are beautiful pieces of children's literature. And I think almost every one of my students in their final reflection wrote, that was a little harder than I thought. It's a little harder to be an author than I thought. So Brianna, we wanna come on up, is that okay? She's got her helper here today with her too. Hello, good afternoon. The book that I wrote is called Life Has Changed. Um, the reason as to why I wrote this book is because, as we all know, we went through this pandemic that we never expected. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, this book is actually about my son. He is a four years old, he's going to be five. His name is Caleb. He did go ahead and start pre-K3 and LIZ where I work uh, with Webb County Head Start. And he started going to school and out of nowhere, he just, we go into spring break and he never goes back to school because of coronavirus. So this book is a contemporary realistic fiction uh, because it's something that we're going through, but it's um, imaged as a children's book. Um, so throughout the story, it just says, um, my name is Caleb Ryan, I am three years old, I go to school, I am in pre-K three. 
I love to play video games, watch TV, and play sports. My favorite sport is baseball. He did go ahead and sign up last year for T-ball, and unfortunately, uh, because of COVID, it just shut down. It, next page, it says, my mommy signed me up to play on a baseball team. I was excited to play, but all of a sudden, the city shut down. That is when life changed for everyone. I didn't know why this happened. I just knew that I was going to be home for a while. No more school, shopping sprees with my mommy, ice cream dates, theater movie nights, and no more evenings playing, playing at the parks. My mommy saw how sad I was and she would comfort me. Then she told me it was because of a sickness called coronavirus. What is that? It sounds so fake. She has to be lying to me. So my child would let his frustration out, crying, he would scream. It was normal. He was three years old, he didn't know what was going on, and I would try to explain to him. After spring break was over, I woke up early thinking I was going back to school to see my teachers and friends. But it was just another day stuck in the house. I started doing school online where they can see me through a camera. It was weird and unreal. Time goes by and nothing gets better. Not only was I sad, but I even started feeling frustrated. That means when you feel annoyed because of something that has changed. So then my mom took me out for a long drive around the city to get some fresh air. I just needed to start wearing a face mask to cover my mouth and nose to prevent me from getting sick from, a, from coronavirus, or as we call it, COVID-19. Months went by and some places opened up. My mommy was scared to take me out when she needed to go to the store to buy food. But I listened to her and didn't touch anything and kept my mask on. I didn't like it, but I knew she would get mad if I took it off. In not, it is now the month of August, my birthday month. I wanted to have a party, but sadly this year was going to be different. I did something small at my house with, a, with my family and best friend Aiden Jace. I then started pre-K online school in a new grade level. I am now in pre-K four. I, am, I have new teachers. When schools opened up to go in person learning, I had to go. My mommy works at the school and she is the only one who could take care of me. I have been the only one in class. I cried before because I felt lonely and thought I didn't have friends. So in that moment, he would always, in the mornings, he would throw himself on the floor, he would cry and be like, no mommy, I don't wanna go to school. So it really hurt me, I was like, it's okay, like your friends are at home, I can't take care of you at home because I have to go to work. My teachers comforted me and told me that I have, I have friends, but that they are at home and they log into class like I do from the computer. It made me feel better. My teachers then realized I knew all my numbers, sight words, and that I can read. I told them my mommy taught me since I was little so that I can be smart. We practiced every day when we were stuck at home. Happy New Year. After the holiday break, I came back to school. My friend Madison is in class with me. I am so happy to see her. She was with me in pre-K three. The only thing is we still have to sit six feet apart and have our masks on. It is almost the end of the school year. It has been a year since coronavirus has been around. It is getting better because everyone is wearing masks and keeping their distance. It's normal to wear a mask and be out anywhere nowadays. Our Texas state governor opened up everything back up and I finally get to go anywhere I want with my mommy. I still keep our distance and we wear our masks, but that won't stop me. My life have, may have changed, but it will not stop me from growing up and doing all the things I love. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as you can see, Caleb carries the book everywhere now as well. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit, or have my students talk to you just one moment more, um, about the fall 2020 semester. Uh, they really laid the foundation for this project, which with the help of the LBV TAMU Literacy Partnership has, I think, improved this semester. Um, they've been incredible leaders, demonstrating not only all the wonderful ways to improve the project in the classroom, but also how service learning can extend beyond the classroom and into the future. Uh, Lourdes and Angie Kentu are two of my wonderful students from fall 2020, and they're here to talk really briefly to you about the ways that they've taken this project and brought it into their future. So, Lourdes, can I ask you to come up? 
Thank you, dear. Good afternoon. I hope everyone is having a good day today. My name is Lourdes Marian Marquez, and I'm a TAMU student majoring in English with a secondary teaching certification. I am also a student mentor uh, for the Advising and Mentoring Center at TAMU. I want to begin by thanking everyone for being here today and Dr. Culliton for allowing me to share some of my experiences. A few months ago, I found myself lost and questioning what I wanted to pursue academically. When I graduated high school, I decided to major in bilingual education as it was something familiar and a safe option. However, the more time passed, the more I felt that something was missing. In the fall of 2020, I enrolled in the children's literature course with Dr. Culliton. It was a service learning class, and although I had previously taken service learning courses, none had been anything quite like this one. The service learning project required writing a children's book that authentically represented the Laredo community. When I learned that the project consisted of writing a book, I was delighted and hesitant. Those that know me know that writing and publishing a book has been one of my personal goals, goals since I was a child. But for younger me, writing a book seemed more like a fantasy than nonfiction. Because how was I supposed to write stories if, it, if I could not even read them? In fourth grade, I moved schools and I did not know the language. My classmates were reading 400 page novels while I struggled to comprehend the instructions in my assignments. One day, the teacher decided to divide the classroom in, into the blue and red teams. And although she, do, she did not tell us the reason, it was simple to figure out why it was put in the red team when all of my 400 page reading peers were in the blue one. As time passed, I found some interesting books. Most of them were promoted by the public schools I attended. In elementary, it was Dairy Wimpy Kid. In middle school, The Giver. And in high school, The Great Gatsby. While all those are great reads, I could never wholly immerse myself in the story because neither Greg Hefley, nor Jonas, or Jay Gatsby looked like me. Why should I care about literature if I cannot relate to the characters? Why should I care about literature if there are no young Hispanic girls in them? Why should I care about literature if my experiences and my stories are not worth telling? Why should I care about literature if no young Hispanic girls are writing them? So 10 years later, as a university student, I realized that somewhere in my community, a young Hispanic girl is asking these same questions I asked myself years ago. The service learning project became very personal for me. While writing the book, I rediscovered my passion for literature and storytelling. I also realized just how essential reading is, especially during difficult times like today due to the ongoing pandemic. During my time in quarantine, I found comfort in books. There's something almost magical about how reading can take you away from everyday stress, even if it's just for a moment. Children need this distraction more than ever, but unfortunately not every child has easy access to books. One of the things I liked the most about the Service Learning Project was that it promotes the availability of children's literature through the LBB Literacy Partnership, which I was fortunate enough to be a part of for a few months before the pandemic hit. Well, the writing, while writing my final reflection of this project, I realized just how much I loved reading and writing. And what I, I was missing all along were stories. A few days after submitting my final reflection, I contacted the advising office for a degree change. It was frightening to change my major, especially after growing up hearing that being an English major was practically asking for unemployment. But now that I have finished my first semester as an English major, I feel much more at peace and look forward to learning. The physical copy of the book I wrote reminds me of what I can do and what I will continue to accomplish in the future. Stories have become a significant part of my life, and I want to share them with as many people as possible. I realized that stories about young Hispanic girls in a border city written by a Hispanic young woman living in a border city are worth telling. So maybe one day I'll publish a novel, or two, or three, I don't know, 15. But thanks to this service learning project, I realized that I could make a difference and what better way to do it than, tell, than to tell stories. So thank you to the TAMU LBB Literacy Partnership for promoting our books. Thank you, Dr. Culliton, for inviting me to share my story and for being one of the most supportive professors I have ever met. And lastly, thank you all so much for listening. I wish everyone a wonderful day. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, Dr. Colton for giving me the opportunity to share uh, the experiences I've had since I wrote this book. Um, this book was inspired by my two children, which are behind me. Um, my son, uh, Caleb, and my son, Aiden. Um, this is a story of uh, a Hispanic boy. Um, one of the most important things that I wanted to get across was that um, kids can relate to this book, that when they see pictures and when they see the images that I incorporated into the book, that they can see the schools in Laredo because I used the pictures from their school uh, to create this book. My son, Caleb um, was diagnosed with autism when he was four. So it was very important for me to share that kids with autism deserve just as much opportunities as any other kids. So my book, um, when I, I was working on it, I encountered a few, sorry, I'm a little <laughs> nervous, but um, I encountered a few obstacles as I'm sure many of my peers uh, did. Um, I wanted to make, uh, portray an image of just children that look the same all throughout the book. Because um, for me, like I, I mentioned, a kid with an autism or any diagnos diagnosis shouldn't be just that, the diagnosis. Yeah. So when I was writing this book, I, I initially got inspired by a conversation I had one afternoon with my children. Uh, my little boy told me that his older brother was his hero because he always helped him with everything and he always explained how to overcome obstacles and how to go around you know school and around just life throughout so it was very important for me to share this story and I got to do this um, project thanks to Dr. Colton and thanks to uh, this institution, this wonderful institution. And also, I shared this in um, this book with my children's teachers this semester, um, this past April in Autism Awareness Month. And um, I feel like I accomplished my goal because I was able to sit in for the reading in one of the classes. And a question that was asked by the teacher was, um, do you guys know what autism means? or what it is, and a, boy, and a boy answered, those are the kids that are sick. Yeah. So it was a hard pill to swallow, but I know that this is something that I'm gonna have to do for the rest of my life. I'm determined to fight for him, to share his story, to share that all the kids are the same, that autism is not a sickness, it's a diagnosis. And by the end of the, by the end, uh, by the time the teacher was uh, done reading the book, all the kids understood that autism is not a sickness, that all kids are the same. And they all agreed that it was, um, they were just so happy to be able to relate to the pictures, to be able to connect with the story because they saw the school that they attend. So that was one of the major things for me for them to relate and to be able to see that everybody is the same. So once again, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share this uh, with everybody else. Um, this book has reached um, all the employees at the school. So it's just an amazing feeling knowing that I was able to write something worth reading and to be able to uh, transmit the message that I wanted. So, thank you so much. <laughs> Angie and Lourdes, thank you so much and congratulations on your success in taking your education into the community. My current students, um, I'm glad you get to see a little bit of what other students are doing with it. Whether it's my class or any additional class, your education does not stop with your graduation, it does not stop with this semester. So take it as a tool to move forward. For us, in future semesters, the books have an exciting, hopeful future. First, the students have created accelerated reader tests, which are going to be part of the AR program, working with the Literacy Partnership. 
Um, this will encourage students to read. They can then answer <coughs> test questions and get points, is I'm uh, told how the system works, as this will encourage this, the books and the students to be reading um, throughout summer programs and things like this. Um, next, we're always looking for more opportunities to purchase additional sets and reading materials, and we've talked to some potential future partners about placing in libraries and additional elementary schools. Finally, the students and I are starting a small writing group that meet with the intention of polishing up the text for publication. I've started to approach local presses so that these authors can actually sell you their books and get them signed and you guys could be doing a meet the author instead of a look at the books day. Um, thank you all so much for your support. Um, students, as you know, I love surprises. I have a final surprise for you. I mentioned at the beginning how the students um, donate their one free copy to the Literacy Partnership. The Office of Alumni Relations are thrilled to celebrate future alumni and the difference you guys are continuing to make in the community. As such, they've donated and purchased for you a hardcover copy of your own book so you'll have one to take forward and move into your own communities. So can we say thank you to the Al Office of Alumni Relations. Thank you guys all so much for attending. We'll now do the picture book handoff. So if you're in my current semester, please go find your book um, and let, we'll take it and we'll donate it to the tutors. If you're the tutors, would you please come up and receive the copies of these books? Thank you guys so much for attending this and being a part of my students' project. I promised it would be brief. That's all we have for you today. Please take a couple moments on your way out to browse some more books, enjoy some reading, enjoy the love of literacy, and uh, we have a group of student authors here. So if you have any questions for the authors about the book, would like to meet a famous local Laredo author, or would like to talk with them about their exciting future projects, uh, please go ahead and um, chat with them. Thank you guys so much for coming.